Okay, it's time to do a bit of a freestyling a rotor buffoonery. Yes, we're going to be making signs freehand without a chick, you see. Well, we're going to be using these pieces of wood, okay? There we are. Yeah, all right. To make signs a bit like uh, that one there. Yeah. <coughs> okay. Anyway, I'm not editing this video, so if I drop anything, it's tough titty. So, no further ado, we're going to be making some signs. Now we have three signs to make. That we have. Yeah. We've got one for Louis Marion Martinez, Linda Dawnstone, and Pippin Medina and Rennie Berth. You see. And they're going to be put onto three separate trees. Because we're doing a rewilding here. Go find me link down below. Uh, here in France where we're planting trees. A thousand trees on two hectares of land. Be part of that? There's a link down below. And what I'll do is I'll plant a tree on your behalf. And I'll make a sign to go with the tree. And that's what we're going to be doing in this video. Now this is not an edited video. No. No holes barred here. What do you get? You get warts and all. That's it. Warts and all. Let's bring it down here. Okay. To the bench. Okay, you see, I've got my rubber mat here. Yeah. yeah that, all right, I'm into rubber. Oh, I like a good bit of rubber, mate. Yeah. <laughs> oh, that's the message she knows. So, anyway, we have our list. We have some pieces of the wood that I've dropped on the floor. Okay. <clears throat> Which happens to be just pallet wood and that, so just cleaned up pallet wood, which is ideal for this job. And we have this little router. And this is a quarter inch router by Katsu. It's a Mikita copy. Okay, and it's not bad at all. I paid 30 euros for this. I think it's a lot more expensive than 50 or 60 euros now. But um, I've had it for years, and it's been a good little tool. It's really solid. I'm quite impressed with it, actually. Um, but it is a Makita copy. Obviously, you can get the Makita, get the Makita. And also, you can get one, one of these with a battery version if you want. It's all very well until the battery runs out. And um, I've got a cove uh, bit in there, which is basically like a, like a round bit to create the letters, uh, like so. All right, and we're going to be doing this freehand. Now, I've chosen that bit for a variety of different reasons, and uh, I'll explain later on in this video. A lot of the other signs we make, I've been doing it with a straight flute a bit, like so. And um, it, it, it works fine, it works fine. The only thing is, I find I can't actually make the letters any much smaller. When you've got a sign with a lot of words, or like long names, it's harder to do, because you make the letters vulnerable, because you've got perpendicular edges, you know, straight edges to your letters instead of them being round. So you'd, you lose some of the strength, you see. When you look at that, with that round there, the edges of the actual letters, especially when you get to, like, for instance, this E, they become a bit stronger. It makes it easier. So what we're going to do is we're going to start with Pepin. Because I've already started with Pepin, you see. OK. Um, I'm going to carry on. I'm sorry it's going to be upside down, but I need to write up the right way up. Otherwise, I'm going to struggle. This is Medina. This will be two signs. So it'll be Pepin Medina and Rennie Birth. To go with one tree. So I'm going to do it lowercase. So I'll just scribble on the letters to uh, give me an eye. <laughs> so I don't miss letters out. Yeah, I don't do misspellings then, you see. Because it, it has been known. Yeah, more than once. So I'll put my letters on there like so. And like so. You know, they might not be exactly where, where I scribbled it. You know, you could do obviously different fonts and stuff like that if you, if, it cho if you choose to. You could even, if you want to, you could grab some carbon paper. Print stuff now, and this you transfer the marks using carbon paper onto your work piece. You've got a laser, you could do a light lasering, um, and you could use that as a guide. Uh, or, or the other ways you can do it, you can do, do it in reverse uh, and photocopy it, and this you iron it on to transfer the uh, image over. It'll be a faint image, but it'll be there. But now I'm just scribbling it on because I have quite, quite a lot to do, as in the amount of signs I've got to make, and it just makes sense to do it this way. So that's what we're going to do. We're going to do myth. That was not myth. See, look, look. That's been... do, you, do you know what I've done? I started with Medina and added birth. Well, it's just Medina. See, that's, that's, that's it. Oh, crikey. Oh, let me just rub that off there. See, what's the noise? <laughs> what an idiot. Crikey, that was nearly my first mistake. I wonder if anybody noticed. Right. Like so. Medina, just like so. Do, 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 do. Obviously, it, like I say, it might not be in the right place. It might end up in, you know, I'll just cut a bit off the end to get it, you know, it's on the side neatly. Okay, no further ado, we've got to start cutting. Now, I've set this 
to literally cut out. I'll tell you what, let's use vernies. I'll give you more of an idea. Or give me more of an accurate idea of how deep I've gone. How deep are these letters using this? How wide is that? So six mil. Using this quarter inch, um, quarter inch uh, coving bit. So how, how deep have I gone? I've only gone literally, oh crikey, three mil. Yeah, they've got, oh, this has gone down three mil, so eighth of an inch. And it's produced quite a nice letter. If I go any deeper now, I'll make these edges and these corners vulnerable. And all I want to be able to do is use some black paint so I can actually highlight the letters so they stand out. See, we can watch. See, the problem is when you do it routing by hand and you have got no guide, no jig, the things to bear in mind you see this piece of wood here, the grain on it goes all over the place. It's coming across here, looks so, and down there, looks so. It's wider at that point there than it is there. It's all wavy. Now, I'm using what wood I've got to make these signs, you see. Um, the old pallet wood, what have you. But if I was choosing a timber, I'd choose something. Obviously, it needs to be reasonably resilient, or you need to treat it. You could, an easy timber to router if you want if you want control would be something like poplar or bat in your basswoods and stuff like that. The close grain, very you know, balsa would be ridiculously easy. In fact, you wouldn't use the router, but you'd use pyrography for that because you can actually yeah you know, burn it quite quickly. But with a router, um, so, yeah, I find poplar quite good because it's quite a uniform grain in it. You see, it's not like this; it's not all over the place. Uh, see these sort of timbers here, what they do is they influence you as you're trying to control the router. Now, I don't know if you can see there's a little place there that might be a little bit of ripple in it. And that's just the router bit trying to follow the grain. So you're not going to cross it, it's trying to go into the grain. grain. And we're cutting on both sides, you see. And that's the other problem, though. Whenever we talk about using a router, we talk about going against the direction of the cutter. So if, for instance, the cutter's going that way, which it would be clockwise, You'd want to go that way so the cut is not trying to ride over, become a wheel, a drive wheel. You want it to cut going against it. So you create a cut. But when you're doing this, the problem is that you're trying to cut on both sides. So one is trying to pull and the other's trying to push. So it, it makes control is a little bit more difficult. So you, getting the right route a bit so you know, is quite important. Now, my big sign, there's a video on this channel actually, where my big sign outside that I've made, quite quite deep and quite big letters that was a bit more um you know you have to have that bull in a china shop you know you've got to take control of that router otherwise it's going to go where it wants to go now with this you see we're talking about a small router bit it hasn't got a huge amount of power over you but it's still got some now when you're using these router bits say for instance this straight fluted one which i don't recommend it's, it, you can do it it does work but um I find that you've got less control and also you can't go as small with the letters because these bits become vulnerable. Um, the other thing about it is you've got even less control, if that makes any sense, because you've got more distance on the side perpendicular with the face. It grips more. I find that is a lot less control than using um, the cove bit or, say, for instance, this little 45. Now, <clears throat> these... Then you think about this type of bit, you it, it, it doesn't produce a very nice finish when when using it for these letters. It doesn't look very good. It, it does if you want to lift it out and you want to feather it off. So for instance, you've got a little squirrel and you want to bring it out. Well, then that works quite well and better than obviously that one and 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 much better than the cove. So anyway, that's what I've got in the moment is, is the cove bit. Thank <laughs> you. 
So I did the E there, and I went too tall with E, really. It doesn't really matter, because red, to be honest. But I was finding it a bit hard to control in this grain here, on this D, in that area there. Because it's literally trying to follow it. Now, trying to hold it in place. And then, in fact, what I end up doing is lifting the router out of the actual um, cove of the router bit. But you always go back in. You've just got to be really careful if you bring it in. The only thing about, when you do anything like this, you've got no vision. It's really hard to see. You know, you've got no light in there, such, have you? In fact, I might just get... A, I'll, I'll go grab a light. That's a good idea. All right, here it is. Oh, my goodness, it's caught up wires, even though it's cordless. See? Nothing's infallible. Let's see if that works. Is that any better? Not down there, really, don't we? So we get from the top. All right, what can I put that on? I need to make it higher. I know what I'm going to do. I'll put that on there. <laughs> I should have thought of this, shouldn't I? I'll say warts and all. Does that work? Is that better? Oh, it's a little bit better. Okay. So, I'm going to go back in and try and clean it up a little bit. It's not going to be perfect, but... So we've got our Pep and Medina. I'll just literally just sand it off. <laughs> like so, get rid of any fluff. And then sort of let it stand out a little bit. Just a light coat of black, just to make it a little bit darker. And I'll put that to one side and we'll get on with another one. So now I'll get another sign. Oh dear. So we'll do the one that goes with it. In this case, it needs to be Renny Birth. Oh, okay. Eeny, meeny, miny. It's all about the same sort of size. Do, 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 so I've got a Rene berth, so I'm literally just going to scribble it on as a guide. It's probably a better way of doing this, but, you know, this is how I'm going to do it. It's even the pencil's trying to... You don't want a sharp pencil, by the way. Because if you're a sharp pencil, you're more likely to follow the grain. <laughs> I've got it's blunt at the moment. Rene, I've got two E's. Oh, blimey. Okay, and birth. The thing with this is when you're doing the router and you can't be frightened of it, the more you the more hesitant you are, the more likely you're going to uh, make a little bit of a mistake. It's like anything in it, you know. It, as long as you're not using materials that are either expensive or hard to come by, if you make a mistake, you just either correct your mistake or you start again. Is that really a hardship, really? Not really, is that? Right, so I'll just put that out of the way so the shavings don't stick to the paint.
you see there, if I say it's just a guide, I've started going a little bit too wide at that point. So, all because of that E, really, because I've got the E on the wonk. But as you see there, I've got these two letters that are a bit close together. So I have to bear that in mind as I do it. And it's just, it's just literally just a guide to tell me, hang on, that's the next letter. I'm not following the lines, no. I was struggling there to control a bit on the battle bottom there. For some reason, it was a bit hard to control. But when you when you first put your outer or oh, engage your outer, there's no plunge on this, and you don't even want to plunge for this job anyway because it's all single-handed type of job. You know, you can't you can't control do the letters like this with a router very easily. Not not with this job. You can, but it's I find that harder to be honest. And if you do a narrow bait, a narrow piece of wood, if you've got a big router, it's going to constantly be trying to fall off the edge of your piece of wood like so. Which makes it a bit of a pain. You see, I'm getting a bit closer. I'm getting closer and closer and closer. So I've just got to readjust myself as I grow across the piece of wood. Now, this piece of wood has got a bit of shrinkage in it, so you've got to be careful. If you've got too much of this shakes going on there, what can happen is, if, for instance, you, you, it's where the letters are, bits can fall out and break off as, you, as you're trying to write with it. So, sorry, the heads are way clear of the, of the bad bits, really. <laughs> Too bad, that's right. Free hand. Please say it is. There should be dry.
and just take the arrows off. Olive oil, actually, no, it's linseed oil. Boiled linseed oil just to protect it because obviously it's going to be going outside, you see, with the tree. They're also making loads of bat boxes, bird boxes, and stuff like that as well. It's just it's, it's only rough carpentry, don't you know I mean? Because in the day that we're making out of parrots and stuff, so um, it's you know, you don't, you don't really want um, you know, high end stuff to here for flipping bird box, that'd be stupid, <laughs> that'd be really ridiculous. So I'm going to put that to one side, let it drain. I've got to drain that, I'll drain that there. Stay, that'll do. Right, and we've got this one here. Let's turn that one off. Do, do, do. Oh, it's pretty! We don't splinters, do we? The wrong way there. Grain's actually going that way, so really I should be going this way. Then this plane. I'll tell you something, I don't recommend these little block planes, these record ones. Really don't. Everything works loose on them all the while. It's really annoying. I think the Stanley one's better, but even that ain't great. Because for the lead nails or something like that, I would. Or either would rivers be right. You know what it's like? If it's a tool that you've already got, you have to kind of warrant it, warrant the expenditure. You know? You can pick these up. That, that, Pretty cheap, they're you know, 50 odd quid or whatever they are. They're not a lot. And I was taking that and picking up from, you know. You know you, then you've got the, obviously the 012s, the um, Stanley version, the low angle block plane. But don't forget, um, regarding the low angle block plane, other than having an a, uh, adjustable mouth, which is actually very useful, the actual block plane itself, even though you say it's low angle, isn't actually very low. The reason for that is the um, when you look at a uh, a bevel down plane, the angle that it is ground at um, pretty much dictates the uh, well the angle of the, the frog sorry dictates the angle of the um, of the cut. Whereas with a bevel up like this one here, this little record um, plane here. So let's say if you've got forty five degrees, all right? Time you've got the angle of your say argument say say that was 25 and that was 20 you got 45 straight away didn't you it's only works about look less that works around 42 so a little bit lower angle but the these block planes they say they call them low angle but they're not actually any lower than say for instance the stanley bailey number four or number five so as long as you you know you got your you know you sharpened it to to an inch of its life you're gonna do a good job. And the other thing, these never seat very well. It's always it's terrible. I don't know why I use it, to be honest. Because it's there. But it never, it never seems to seat properly on the on the actual um, on the bed. It's terrible. It's probably one of the worst planes I've got. It really has. I think it's do this mechanism here, actually. I think it's not in the right place. No, I don't think it is, actually. What's going on here? Awful, awful plane. I'll see what's going on. Now, but, all right, I'll show you what I'm, what I'm talking about. I'll make another video about this. You see where it screws into there? This lateral lever, right, needs to be sitting flat on there, okay, just about. All right, but it's not. It works, you know, if you don't, if you've uninstalled it 
and then put it back in. And you've accidentally made it go part way up the actual threads of the um, of the screw. What will happen is it won't be sitting low enough. So when you put your that's better. See now it's sitting there. So it's rocking on the screw basically. I'll do a bit of video about that because it's, it's it's very annoying. Yeah, stupid design. Absolutely stupid. This is stupid as well. Because you, you can't get your fingers on because of this. It's in a bad it's in the wrong position. It's terrible. I don't like it. I've had a long while though. It's done a lot of work, so you can say, oh you shouldn't complain, but I do. Because I think it's shit. Right, there you go, two little signs. One for Rennie Birth and Pepin Medina. And like I say, there's a GoFundMe link down below in the description for which you can have a tree and I'll make a sign to go with the tree and that'll be placed with the tree. And as the tree matures, it'll be actually placed in the tree. Yeah, on the bigger branches. At the moment, I'm putting them on stakes and what have you. But you see, the thing about this project, it's not just about um, sourcing the trees. Some of the trees we're doing through propagation ourselves um, and we use those ones for the spoiler donations generally. And uh, the ones that we buy from the local nursery, we've got a nursery literally just around the corner here. Uh, obviously it comes at a cost. You've got the cost of buying this stuff. And some of the whips are quite, you know, the saplings are quite big, at least a year old. Um, some bigger than, yeah, actually no, some of them are quite large. That last one we did was quite big. Anyway, um, so there's ongoing costs, like for instance the stakes. Uh, we've got to a stage now, we've used everything up that we have laying around here. So we're now having to go purchase the stuff, got itchy nose now, and uh, the tree protectors and stuff, and the ties and all that sort of stuff. So I try and reuse whatever I can, like old inner tubes right here for, the, for the ties, but we're now having to buy the stuff. So any help with the project would be really, really appreciated. And it's good, you know, I, I think it's good. You know, the idea that uh, creating habitats for the animals, what have you, and planting trees isn't a bad, a bad thing to do, I don't think, do you? So anyway, that's for one of... Uh, 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 Louis is, uh, well, family members, as in they're having three trees, and they're going to be together, I believe, looking at that. And uh, then my next one I'll be doing will be Linda Dawn Stone, Knee Rumble, and then we've got uh, Louis uh, Marin Martinez and Linda Dawn Stone. Yeah, so it's one, two. Oh, yeah, okay, yeah, yeah, two separate trees. <laughs> anyway, it's time for me to go. Go from me links down below. But please just boot the old like button because it does help the channel, you know. Because times are tough. Not everybody can actually contribute to a project, can they? No. Anyway, toodaloo.